story time. Everyone say, whoa, whoa. You just gained awareness of a capability you didn't know you didn't know. And if you don't know, you don't know it. What do we call it? Blind spot. It's a blind spot. You're in sales and you're continually building your pipeline. You have to be able to afford the loss of a prospect. You have to be able to afford the loss of an opportunity. You have to continually build your pipeline fearlessly so that you have more deals in the hopper and if you lose a deal, it's no big deal because you have more. And when you ask a better question, you get a better answer. When you ask that question, the brain starts thinking of how could I use this? So why is it that sometimes sales professionals will do all the training in the world, they'll read the books, they'll go to the sales training, and performance does not dramatically change? Why is that? Well, because what I found from interviewing so many people is performance is not always based on all that education. And what I've learned is the best are not always the best. And what do I mean by the best are not always the best? Well, the best are not always the best, meaning the people who do all the training, they're the best at the skills, the knowledge. In sales, they're not always the best because they lack the three core traits that top performers all exhibit. And that is, they're fearless. Top performers are fearless. They're willing to make the calls. They're willing to do what most people aren't doing. They're willing to ask the tough questions. They're not frozen when someone yells at them and screams at them and frustrates them. They're not afraid to make the next call. They're not afraid to pick up the phone. Number two, they play balls to the wall. They're driven, they're motivated. Top performers are driven and motivated. And sometimes the people who have the best skills don't have the drive and motivation. They don't expect to be number one. And if they don't expect to be number one and they don't set a goal of being number one, they don't work to that level. And number three, what they're lacking is they drop balls, whereas top performers don't drop balls. What does that mean? They follow up. They remember to do the important things. You know, studies show that only 50% of all calls, sales reps will do a second follow-up. Only 25% will do a third. And then it drops in half every time after that. The reality is they have to continue to follow up. And most people forget. Reps don't do it. And what I come to learn after interviewing thousands of people, just top performers, and I was able to segment who's the best from the worst, what are the top 5% doing that the rest aren't, it wasn't that they always had the best sales skills. The best are not always the best. But they followed those three core traits. They were fearless, they were driven to succeed, and they didn't drop the ball. The best are not always the best. See, what top performers do is at the beginning of the year, if you were to ask them, where do you think you're going to perform at the end of the year, they're going to say probably number one. If you talk to an average performer and you say, so where do you think you're going to be ranked at the end of the year? They're going to say, oh, maybe in the top 50%. And what you're going to find is if they think they're only going to be in the top 50%, that's where they're going to be, the top 50%, because they're only going to work to the level of their goals and their vision that they see of themselves. 2002 Olympics in Salt Lake City. I'm watching the combined downhill. One of the greatest decorated skiers of all time is a gentleman named, from Norway named Andre Amat. Andre, Andre Amat, going into the last run of the combined downhill in the Olympics, was in first place. And all Andre had to do was finish. All he had to do was get down the hill. He didn't have to, be, he didn't have to push it. He had to have a mediocre average time to be on the medal stand and to get an, uh, an Olympic medal. I'm watching him go down the hill. He's skiing, he's skiing, he's skiing. And he's flying all over the place. He's almost wiping out. I'm like, what is he doing? He's going he's gonna to wipe. He's going to get nothing. He flies down the mountain. Guess what? One of the top scorers of the day, he gets the gold. They're interviewing him afterward. And they say, Andre, why did you do this? You could have risked everything. You would have left with nothing. You wouldn't have had any medal. And he said, I didn't come here for a medal. I came here for the gold. Top performers set their expectation. They play balls to the wall. They know where they want to be. They work and they perform to that level. See, top performers ha always have a goal in mind. They have a vision of where they want to finish. But what they do is they typically break that goal down into smaller components. Now the problem is some of you, and I know this from experience because I was there too, not always the most motivated. You know what I believe the secret is? You got to have a carrot. And oftentimes that carrot is not just being number one. 
So give yourself a carrot that means something to you. I'll give you an example of this. I was, I was working at IBM at the time. I was one of the top performers. I'd been top 1% in all of IBM. The next year, I get in about to September, they had a quarterly contest. You know, and I just wasn't, I don't know, I, I, I don't know what it was. I wasn't that motivated. But I needed more motivation. Well, the first, last couple of years, I'd been, uh, I wasn't playing much golf. I love golf. I just hadn't been playing much. And I had a set of clubs I'd bought about 15 years earlier. But I wasn't playing enough, so my buddy who kept saying, oh, buy new clubs, buy new clubs. I'm like, yeah, I'm not even good enough. Why should I? So I thought, you know what? I need to treat myself. I think I need some clubs. But it's discretionary income for me. And, and if I win the award, you know, I wouldn't buy clubs. And I thought, no, you know what? No. I need a carrot to drive me to try to win this contest. So what I did is I went to a golf store and I met with them. I tried out clubs and what I did is I actually picked out the exact set of clubs I wanted. Maybe $2,500. Custom clubs, custom built, amazing. And I thought, all right, this is what I want. I took a picture of it, I put it in my office, and every day, day, the more I saw it, I thought, this would be the coolest thing if and when I, I win the award, I'm, I'm going to go buy the clubs. I mean, that's my deal. I've been putting it off, that's my award. And I got so excited about it. I called my buddy Jack, and I go, Jack, I go, if, if I win, I'm buying clubs that day. And now I got excited to, for the contest. And I drove my performance. I set goals and I won. And I got the $10,000. The day I heard I won the award, I went to the golf shop and I bought the clubs. Now, I will tell you, I almost didn't. What I almost did is I almost bought, the, I almost thought, ah, well, you know, I, I just, I'll pay off bills. I'll pay off credit card. I'll put it in the bank. But here's the problem if I had done that. If I had done that, what would have happened would have been, I would have created a new habit. And the new habit would have said, you don't deserve it. You don't follow through with your goals. You don't do what you say you're going to do. And what I learned is, you can't do that. You set a goal. You set a reward. You set a carrot. And when you win, you do what you say you're going to do. So I won the award. I went and bought the clubs immediately. And it was the greatest rush. Even thinking about it right now, I've got chills. Thinking about how exciting it was when I got these clubs. Because I rewarded myself. And I now use that as motivation anytime I do things. I say, what is it? what's my carrot? Set a carrot out there as your goal. And what that will do is drive you. If money alone, being number one alone isn't, find something that motivates you. Is it a trip? Is it buying a gift? Is it taking care of your, your significant others? What is it that motivates you? You have to find your carrot to motivate you so you'll play balls to the wall.